I have to admit, the one thing that I don't like New Zealand, especially in Auckland, is that they have construction everywhere throughout the city. Let me show you why. See over there, they are doing some road work for better infrastructure. That's a good purpose. But then can you finish your previous project before you start a new one? But don't mind me, today is about Argentina Travel Guide. Alright, things to see in Argentina. Argentina is a home of many things to see. Um, whether you are a passionate about wildlife, nature landscape, or man-made architectural places, Argentina is not gonna let you down. I have outlined many stuff that interested in me. Although there are hiking tracks and lake district that are no doubt beautiful to many people, um, I found it similar to what we can find in New Zealand. So I'm not gonna include that in my bucket list, but I have put two very helpful blog in the full notes um, from the description below. So make sure you check it out if you are interested. So if you are interested in wildlife, um, the first one is called Caligua National Park. They have about 270 animal species and half of them are birds. So if a bird fan, definitely go to this one, Caligua National Park. Or you can go to El Rey National Park. Um, it also have about 255 species of birds, 50 species of mammals. The another one, the name is quite complicated. Quebrada del Condorito National Park. Um, but I find the landscape of this track is really amazing. And also you can find some rare mammals, including puma, red fox, snakes, lizard, and geckos. It's probably not very good for the girls, but pretty fun for the boys. El Gran Chaco, you can find jaguar, wolf, puma, more than 500 species in this region. You get access from the newest national park of El in Penny Trouble. So next one is Punta Tombo, it's home of the penguins. And in the next 10 seasons, you can see up to 500,000 penguin along the coast. It's gonna be a heck of a scene. If you're a hardcore wildlife enthusiast, you can try El Burrito National Park. It's, it's less accessible, but definitely you can get to some less traffic places that can see some unique scene and wildlife. One thing I recommend is that hire a local tour it's not going to cost you much but it will bump up your likelihood of seeing the wildlife and save you a lot of time and you don't get lost in the jungle and forest and hiking places so hire a local tour i think it's really beneficiary if you are a fan of color i've outlined three places for you the first one is Calamarca province where you can find mountains desert lake flamingos all combined with the color smashing with each other's. Next one, another difficult name. Quebrada de Humahuaca. It represents the true color of rock formations. So the rock contains different minerals and that represents different colors and when they mix with each other, that's what it show in this place. The next one is called Cauchacui Valley. So you can see the red and gold valley woven into each other, it's just amazing. Waterfall is also very common, especially in the northern east of Argentina. Um, this one particularly is very interesting, Devil's Throat. It's one of the most unique landscape in the world. It's about 150 meter long in the U-shape waterfall. Definitely wanted to see this. City of Cordoba. This city in 2006 was awarded title of culture capital of Americas. So you can imagine that it has contained a rich culture of the whole Americas. It has four excellent galleries dedicated to emerging art, contemporary art, classical art and fine art. And if you're interested in culture like me, definitely visit this one and go to the weekend crafts markets to meet the next Vincent van Gogh. Ushuania town, it's far south of Argentina. 
the town itself is kind of same, where you see the colorful coastline cities, the snow mountain behind it, the glacier at the full stop of Marshall Glacier. You can cruise to the canal Beagles to see the penguin and the sea lion, and it's where your ultimate journey starts to Antarctica. Last minute deal do exist in January and February, but do prepare to wait for week long to get those deals. Peninsula Valdez is where you observe the killer whales hunting elephant seals and sea lions. Great scene. Best time to visit is between February to March and the tour cost about 120 US dollars. Although renting a car might give a bit more flexibility, it might cost a little bit more as well, just depends if you have time or if you have money. If you're in Salta, check their slow flex. It's called Las Salina Grandes. It's also got the swimming pools and that combines gives you great Instagram photos. Sorosa Bernados, you go there through the cable car to the mountain top and at night it gives you a great city view of Salta. In Santa Cruz, you will find Glacier Perino Marino. It's one of the great places that definitely one of you and it's also the most famous glacier in Argentina. It has a five kilometer walk from the entrance to the viewpoint which gives you a grand view of the glacier or you can take one and a half hour track on the ice faster that costs about US dollar 30 and the entrance costs about another 25 US dollar. If you're fancy in hiking there's another place in Santa Cruz that I highly recommend you to do. It's from El Chanton to Villa O Hijin. It's combined hiking and and boat journeys throughout and you see a stunning view of Fitzroy glaciers and lake and then you find yourself end up in the Chile border. Also there's another world heritage site that I find amazing about it's called Kuala de los Menos. You can find the ancient painting from 7300 years BC that's 9300 years from now. The downside of that is that it's in the middle of nowhere so you gotta travel far to get there and you gotta travel far to get back. While you are in Buenos Aires there are so many things you can do and you can see. What I've outlined are the things that even from the blog and the pictures makes me definitely want to go. So the first one in Buenos Aires, the Museum of Latin American Art of Buenos Aires, a outcast of 20th centuries of Latin American art, culture, film and event. Great place to visit. Palacio Barolo. This place is particularly interesting. It's built in 1923, just about 100 years time. It's inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy. Its structure is divided into hell, purgatory and heaven. Its height of 100 meters is reference to the song and the number of a floor 22 is mirrored to the number of a verse of the song. While in Buenos Aires you can't miss the street art. It's started from the dark period of Argentina between 1976 to 1982 where they've suffered from the dictatorship of the government. At that time there are around 30,000 people when disappeared. You can feel the anger and furious from the people and the local artists decided to express those anger and furious on this war arts and now it represents the determination of the freedom from the Argentine. Not far from Buenos Aires you find yourself in the La Plata. While in La Plata, visit La Plata Museum. It's a great museum of anthropology, zoology, geology and botany. Not far from there, you can find yourself in Cathedral of La Plata. Just like many other great cathedrals, you'll be astonished by the great architecture, the inside details and the history throughout the building when it's first built in 1902. Things to eat and drink. Argentina is no stranger to many foodies and drinkers. I've outlined several things that I definitely want to try. It. I've also found a few restaurants that are particularly interesting, not because of food, but because of their layout and some other factors. The first one, one of the four big parts of Argentina's culture, the mate tea. It's a caffeine rich tea made of a soaking dry leaf of a holy species called yaba mate, and they put it into hot drinks drink it with a metal straw. It's very popular throughout the South America. What you find on a Sunday park is that people sitting around each other and sharing the mate. Enjoying them make friends, sharing their mate, sharing is caring. Another big part of Argentina's culture, asados. It's a tradition of South American barbecues and they have that sort of kind of like a 
a family event where they share barbecue every Sunday and it consists of beef, pork, chickens and many other meats on the grills it comes with wine and salad, it's great food if a meat lover, don't miss out if you're a vegetarian, too bad wine is also a big thing in Argentina enjoy yourself with a masterpiece of high altitude and sunshine if you're in Mendoza, try the wine taste they do have one called Taste of Mendoza, it's a premium wine tour and the Google map it shows permanently closed but I'm pretty sure there are many wine tours around Mendoza another favorite drink is called Fernet and Coke Fernet is an Italian herbal liquor and Coke is pretty, pretty much Coca-Cola a few traditional food that are quite good one is called quinoa um, I, I'm not too sure where the W is come from but that's what it pronounced quinoa it's a mixture of seeds, it's rich in protein, fiber, vitamin B and minerals it's a great food if you want to lose weight but having too much might give you trouble of diarrhea Pumita is another great food it's like ground corn mixed with onion, eggs and other spices and then you wrap it with a corn husk and then you steam it kind of like Chinese zhongzi but in a corn version and then it's relatives tamales it's similar corn based dough mixed with meats, beans and cheese and wrapped with corn husk or banana leaves two particularly interesting restaurants in Buenos Aires the first one is called Napo's Bar it's got a massive storage unit of antique collections of its owner decided to show it throughout the restaurant and then another one, the Speak Easiers which means hidden bar in Buenos Aires they don't have the shop front you find it from another shop or underneath of the floors there's one called Floreria Atlantico it's a bar behind the flower shop and there's another one called Harrison Speakeasy basically all you need to do is ask to see the wine cellar I just thought it's pretty cool too my collections don't do the justice of Argentina's food and drinks if you are in Buenos Aires or you're interested in Buenos Aires food and drinks check my notes below and I've had those two blogs about great food and drinks in Buenos Aires that's it for this week's vlog 